that and that now uh, now it, now it's your time to rule so you have to be an example for everyone that follows you I do feel bad with it we missed that to be, but to be fair I'm playing this with like 30 percent volume so that way I'm not getting much echo and so as a result I'm missing a lot of actual dialogue that's because this game is a pack subtitle so whatever <laughs> I was considering doing that, but I don't know how when I tried to do that once many years ago. Timing for subtitles is a bitch. It is, and it's also very arduous and very brain melting. Especially for how quickly you have to do it too. Just fall behind my lord blindly. Oh, okay, there it is. I think we just passed that point with, <laughs> with uh, the, the, uh, him actually explaining to you Kimura that, yeah, just be your own man. Yeah. This is a stage that uh, that I otherwise would have cut, but it does actually set up for a subplot that we are not going to see resolved or mentioned ever again during the scope of our Let's Play, so I figured I'd touch on it briefly when we get to it. Oh, really? This will be interesting. Oh, wow. I never noticed the pop-in <laughs> on, on that yeah. intro. The, the magic of watching your oh, own footage back. You get to see things you didn't otherwise catch on your regular playthrough. Yeah, that I'm seeing trees popping in. That's the funny thing is you don't notice that as much from far away on a TV versus up close on a computer. Oh, Christ. Okay, this definitely looks like a PS2 game. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I should mention this. this. I was having this thought earlier while I was at... So, I mentioned this in Discord. Like, I actually had... On my current file for uh, DMC4 Special Edition on the PS4, I actually did get all the way to like the last three levels with uh, Nero and Dante. And I didn't know that. So I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to just beat this now. And I'm going through the Savior boss fight earlier. And I'm just like, man, this is actually fucking impressive for a PS3 game. Like, they actually rendered all of this level, and you actually have this. The savior is actually too scale with Dante and you fight it and there's no frame drops. I'm just like motherfucker M2 framework is such a strong engine And I'm, I'm now I'm once again saddened that god damn it. They abandoned this. This is so cool and cinematic And especially very early into the PS3 and 360s life that game released in 2008 Yeah, that well, yeah, 2000, 2008 was a great year. We also got Valkyria Chronicles and Metal Gear Solid 4 at the same fucking year Jesus, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also... <laughs> I don't know if it says anything or not, but actually, uh, the Sanctum boss fight from the outside is one of my favorites in the series. Oh, you're talking about the first Sanctus boss fight? Yeah, when you're at, uh, the one where you're playing as... As Nero, uh, yeah. No, 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 the one, uh, the one as, uh, Dante, where you're fighting, where you're fighting the giant to scale and jumping around all the platforms. Oh, you mean just the savior boss fight? That, that's just what it's, yeah, what it's uh, uh, labeled as. Yeah, it's yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's very fucking impressive. But also the final boss against Sanctus himself is also fantastic. Yeah. This is a stage that I used to hate a lot back in the days because it was real annoying trying to find, trying to get the timing right for one of the secrets. And then I realized, oh wait, I don't care. I can just give up. This stage, ironically, ended up becoming one of the most... This is the stage I ended up doing four times. I think I cut most runs of it in this instance. But this, ironically, ended up becoming one of the more relaxing stages for me to play. I don't know if it's the color scheme of the overall stage or whatnot, but this is the stage I've actually come around to really enjoying. I mean, I can definitely see it with the visuals. I mean, the granted why I said about this being a very PS2-looking level, that's mostly in the grass textures. Like, this is still pretty easy to look at, so... And there's not any major, like, uh, gimmicks that is impairing you in any way, shape, or form, so I can see it, yeah. Oh, there's a gimmick to this stage, that's why there's that... Yeah, the boat the defense, corner. obviously, but it's, not, I mean, like, directly impeding your path. It doesn't seem to be anything like that. Oh, no, there still is. Your goal in this stage is to... Your, your boat moves very slowly. First of all, make sure it doesn't die, of course, but primarily... You get to all of the bases before uh, that are still locked. You beat the bases and you open up uh, the dams on the river so that way the boat can keep moving. Otherwise, it gets stuck. Yeah. And if it gets stuck in places for too long, some of the paths actually close up entirely. You can see the way uh, the way it's moving that I got it on the fastest path. But if I, if, if, 
If I was slower early on in the stage, it would actually have to go the whole long way around. Ooh, damn. Looking at uh, looking at the map. Oh yeah, I see. You, you, it starts <laughs> on like the bomb, then it goes on the left side, and that's the fast path. I suppose like the giant like roundabout in the middle of the stage. Yeah, I could see that. Yep. That gate right there to the right. That's one of the. That's one of the secrets that'll let you go to a hidden area much earlier in the stage. Hmm. And I used to know how to do that, but I couldn't remember during this recording, and I was just like, eh, it doesn't matter, it's no great loss if I miss it. Plus, there's still, uh, there's still a way to get over to that area, just not, just not, uh, as quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pop-in really is something. Uh, the thing with the boat is that it takes, like, ten hits or something for it to be destroyed, so that just is not gonna happen. He's only gotten hit, the like, length one of... time so far, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ultra-type Mokami. ultra type. <laughs> That is certainly a way to describe it, yeah. <laughs> just completely, uh, ran by the horse there. <laughs> So that, uh, that charging move with, uh, Yukimura, is that, like, a power-up save for him? The one where the matchsticks actually ignite? Yeah, uh, it's an attack boost and I think a speed buff as well. It also makes some of, uh, some of his other attacks, uh, extends the length of some of his other attacks, like the Thousand Stab. If you're, uh, in the flaming state, it'll actually make this attack do, like, way faster. Sort of like that. Damn, nice. Uh... This is something I won't show off until almost the very end, but there are, are personalized character items you can equip that give them uh, specific buffs. Like, uh, the, there are multiple le uh, levels of the charged up fire, hmm. and uh, one of them is you can either be on fire the whole time or a single, char uh, a single use of the charge up uh, button will take you to max charge. They aren't very useful in this game, but come as early as Utage, they'll get revamped and become much better, much more useful. Hmm. This is a secret. And it also, uh... Oh my, that the fucking with... thing's back. Yeah. <laughs> Yoshiaki Mogami likes to steal things. This is, the same, this is the same ball and chain dude that took over the, uh, you can, uh, Mitsunari's base, right? Oh no, this is a different guy. Yes. It's not the same character. This character stole it. <laughs> stole the drill, uh, the Drillatron. This is, this is great. <laughs> yeah, and this is a, a secret. You have, to, you have to find that ledge up there that I jumped up to. Or uh, get uh, the the gate to open up. I was looking at the dialogue. I don't remember he, how to do. He didn't say he stole. He fa he he supposedly found it on a market or something. That's interesting. <laughs> we know that he stole it because, as we'll find out a little bit later, he has a tendency for stealing things. Oh, okay. You know, you know the aristocracy. Makes sense. Yeah. Bastards steal land. They'll yeah. certainly steal uh, tanks as well. Oh, you know, eat the rich. Yeah, definitely. Burn the bourgeoisie. This thing is a pain on the ass to fight. Is it because of the, the Not frequent disappearing and going underground part of it? Actually, all things considered, you're doing a pretty good job against it. It's not hard to fight, it's just... It takes a while, and that's annoying. Yeah. And like you said, it keeps running away. And you don't get as many opportunities as you should to attack its fucking wind-up key. Yeah. I can't really wonder if you can parry the drills that come out of the ground. That'd be interesting. Doubt you could do it, but it'd be kind of funny. I don't think you can... I don't. I think you can only parry, uh... Uh, car uh boss characters. And I mean, like, uh, boss humans, rather. Yeah. Because, uh... Do this thing moves in a very set way. So you probably wouldn't be able to knock it back, because that's what a parry does, is it also sends them reeling back five feet. So you wouldn't be able to do it on this, or uh, the head of Zavi, or uh, the other mechanical bosses, which this is a really... 
So we've already ma pretty much made it clear that being historically accurate to the 1600s was never a thing they were doing in the first place, but this is the game where they re really just said fuck it and went and went absolutely nuts with the how uh, how weird can we get? Yeah, historical historical accuracy is what the nerds across the pond at Tecmo Koi do. Now nah, we're having fun with this shit. <laughs> Yeah, just wait until we end up seeing Psyka. <laughs> yeah, it's uh... We haven't encountered Psyka. Have we encountered Psyka? I think she- No, she was definitely in, um... Uh... Mitsunari, Mitsunari story. story. Yeah, but like only one time, I think. Yeah, uh, that's how you start uh, Mitsunari's story, is you... You go to her because you're trying to get her to join your side instead of Ieyasu's. Yeah. It did not end well. Nope. God. This is a character. <laughs> this is a character I don't expect most people to like. I find him really funny, actually. I I, bl I think the the wording would be funny in an ironic sort of way. <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, I like when Cr uh, when Chris Corey Smith do the funny voice. <laughs> that's that's fair. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard to argue hey. with uh, ren with a rendition of the Joker, yeah. <laughs> also, beca also because in another character's story, he will end up calling his rapier a baton. D That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I also, also do calls I appreciate everyone. his look. I, I, I imagine this is probably just like... M more so of like a parody if like there was a uh, actual European in Japan in this time period Which I mean, yeah, I guess they're getting that idea down pretty well It brings me back to uh, Soul Calibur. What's his name? Dompier, yeah. The guy What well, uh, that? No, there's a character in six. I think he's a blonde guy. I think he's wearing a glasses or monocle or something He might also have a rapier but he talks about how he's going to feed you to his pet. The only other rapier guy I could think of is Raphael, and that's it. Maybe it's not a rapier, but it gives me the same kind of vibe as a guy from Soul Calibur 6. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> but also, he has a tendency of calling characters who he's not familiar with by the wrong name. And just now, he called Yukimura Yaki Soba. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> what a delicious soup. Yup. Ah, uh, here it is. Oh, nope, one second. After the victory thing. Yeah, no, just, this is just a generic outro, I'm pretty sure. There's gonna be a, a, a short scene afterwards. But yeah, actually getting to look at it in the light, yeah, his hair looks weird. It, yeah, it's definitely like, more so from the sides, but when you look at it bang on and you see the regular texturing on it, it's definitely really fucking odd. <laughs> oh, that's also the funny detail is that normally you're supposed to lower that bridge to get over to him because, oh, here it is. Please wait, please! This is Matsu. We just freed her. Oh, did we? Oh, okay. My name is Matsu. Inadvertently, yes. And no, this doesn't have anything to do with the fact that she's set as my support character. Yeah, I, I got her as much. I didn't know Matsu got, ever got captured. Huh. They will stop at nothing to see him. That's a thing that you don't figure out the full details of Antel Utage, where uh, Yoshiaki gets his own story. It's in the final stage of his story. He winds up in uh, her and her husband's land, and he kidnaps her because he's trying to use her as a blackmail bargaining tool with uh, her well, husband uh, in order to force her husband to join Ieyasu's army instead of Mitsunari's. Hmm. And because we freed her, his plan won't go uh, won't go off without a hitch anymore. Now, uh, the Maeda are free to, jo uh, to join whoever they want. They're no longer uh, stuck behind blackmail. But uh, yeah, that's uh, you end up you end up freeing her uh, later on uh, in Keiji's story in one of his routes where it actually does where the story does reach its full conclusion where he's one of the final bosses. Hmm. But uh, that, like I said, that's not something we're gonna see 
uh, in the in uh, our run at all because we're not doing KG story. And it says, as I look up, I hear. I'm actually paying attention to the dialogue. They are talking about the dreams that you is having. <laughs> it's the sun speaking to you. Yeah. yeah. I think it is, General. I think. I think a dream like that means you're struggling. You don't say, Sasuke. Sasuke. <laughs> Even the sun must first rise up from the sea. Yeah, he's saying that uh, that he has had this dream every day for like a month. General, yeah. You don't belong there anymore. Dark and cold. It's time to show the world your Sasuke is such a slept-on character. He's actually pretty damn cool in this in this uh, series. Sasuke, you have my thanks. He's not. He's never really given a whole lot to play with. He has three modes, maybe. One of them is uh, screwing with uh, Yukimura. One of them is screwing with Kasuga, and the one you see the least often is uh, when, uh, when he actually gets to play ninja for real. When he fights against uh, Kotaro from time to time, yeah. And we'll get to see that uh, to full effect much later on, but most of the time you don't really get to see a whole lot out of him. Hmm. I guess that's the fate of subordinate characters. Yeah. So I I initially so Mitsunari beat someone just now, and I saw an RM on there. And I thought it was Matsunaga, but it, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. But it also just put the idea in my head. Holy shit. Matsunaga's not in this game at all, is he? No, he's uh, he's not in the base game at all. He doesn't get brought back until Utage. Was he in prior games? I'm pretty sure he was. Yes, he was introduced in Two Heroes alongside Kojiro, and that's so that Kojiro could actually have a rival of his own, because they didn't think to actually make his rival be Sasuke until... Utage or four, funny enough, hmm. which is which is kind of curious because it's been like that in the anime since the beginning. Yeah. But yeah, uh, no. If it, if Mitsunari beat someone else with an M, then that would have been Motonari. But I just think it's uh, funny. The stage prompt that says alliance is like it's one of the it's the only time you see something like that in the entire game, I think. Where it's just a button that actually that uh, triggers a dialogue sequence instead of a uh, battle. Oh fuck, this is new. I think this happens, or a variant of this will happen, I think, almost every time. Yeah, this is... Oh, it's like Higahara. There we go. Yeah, this didn't happen during <laughs> Mitsunari's story, I don't think. It would have happened during his red route, not his blue, because they don't place nearly as much uh, emphasis, if at all, on Sekigahara during their blue routes, because that's when they're free to just do whatever. Hmm. For uh, Mitsunari's, his blue uh, finale would have actually been in Osaka, I think. Yeah. And Sekigahara, I think we mentioned this the last time, but Sekigahara is a... St uh, it is a location that has like six different stage variants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can believe that. Some of, some of which are very good, some of which are very annoying. This can be deep, really depends. Depends on how good of a time you have fighting against Tadakatsu. Aftermath, you say, damn. The very like non-traditional boss row level. Everything's already gone to shit. Goddamn. It's neat, but offsetting. <laughs> My lord. Well the thing is that they're to go along with the multiple different versions of uh the stage, the idea is that it's different stages of the battle itself, different times of day. So like this is at dusk. There's another uh one of Mits uh, Mitsunari's version is the one that happens I think at dawn or in the early morning, because the sky is blue, but like not nighttime blue. Yeah. Perhaps that dream will no longer trouble me. And yeah, now everything's coming to a head. He's finally got his head above water again. Oh wow, no matchsticks. <laughs> huh? The weapons, the weapons in cutscenes are pre-rendered, but not your costume. I find that very odd. But the matchsticks showed up for. The his actual ending, 
Huh. Or no, no, they show up at like yeah. his regular ending in the last level. It's kind of weird. In the in the victory cutscene, yeah. Oh wow, I haven't seen an intro for for fucking Honda yet. Yeah, because uh, the only two places you're gonna fight him are either in one of the Sekigahara stages, or in uh, Ieyasu's actual uh, home base itself. And we haven't done that yet. I think in the whole run we're only gonna do it once, and that's because I just don't like Ieyasu's stage. Hmm. This is a really funny layout for this map, though. It's been a long road leading to this moment. Yeah, it's very disjointed. I could, uh, it looks like some bridges are, are supposed to be like dropped in like the middle section there, because otherwise they're just completely cut off from each other. Yeah, there's a couple of different ways that this uh, stage can proceed depending on which of the two routes you take at the beginning. Hmm. And some bosses you can almost ignore if you wanted. Yeah, I think I see it. Like, it looks like you could probably. I mean, Honda's already withdrawn, but I imagine that you can probably just ignore him outright, uh, depending on the path you take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, what I was talking about with the multiple layer levels of uh, charge with the fire effect. If you have the item equipped, a single uh, press of the button will do a full charge instead of having to mash it constantly until it gets to level 3. That's really convenient. But I'll show off how that works uh, in a little more depth later. Oh, okay, good. I avoided that. Are you, are you pretty much gonna lose that if you get caught up in a clash with them? Not necessarily that you'll lose immediately, but it takes. But when you lose them, you lose a. Oh wow! I actually managed to parry his bosser attack on <laughs> the first hit. Nice. It's not that you lose immediately. It's just that losing a duel takes off a, a very large chunk of your health. And you have to mash way harder against the super bosses than you do against any of the regular bosses. Right, I guess he would be qualified and, as a super boss in this instance, yeah. I don't even know if it's really that so much as... Well, there are two... Suffice to say, there are different classes of bosses. There's light, medium, and heavy, and he's definitely the heaviest heavy bosses. The other ones include Munashige, the Chainsaw Man... Kanbei, the ball and chain man, and uh, Shimazu, the guy with uh, the buster sword. Yeah, I guess it also probably helps the fact that it looks like Tadakatsu is never really mandatory to fight, or if he is mandatory, like, there's a lot of ways to deal with him out, right? Like, there's a lot of comparisons to make with, like, even Mr. X from Resident Evil 2. <laughs> yeah, like how during uh, the final stage of Mitsunari's blue route, if you were able to get to the bases fast enough, you could activate the cannon that would just destroy him outright. <laughs> yeah. You have, you have a couple instances like that. Most of the other times it's just, do you have enough of a lead on him that you can just run away and finish the stage before he catches up to you? That's how it is in uh, some of these stages, but also primarily in uh, Ieyasu's personal stage. Yeah. Is just being able to run away from him long enough to finish the fight before he catches up to you. Uh, I'm also I'm digging the definite uh, callouts to uh, Resident Evil two and three bosses, Mr. X and Nemesis here because it's kind of the same idea with those bosses. Really, you can choose to take him down, but it's super fucking hard, or you can just ignore him outright. <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm thinking about uh, specifically the clash, or as they call it here, dual mechanic. They made it significantly harder in Vanilla Bosser 4, so much that it was basically unfair. You were never going to win the uh, a duel against a character like Hideyoshi in the base version of 4. And when Tsumaraki came around and there were a ton of balance changes, that was something they definitely made sure to fix. Yeah, usually... If 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 it's um hard to just out muscle someone, that's one thing. But if like you're not gonna win an A class scenario whatsoever, that's a different thing. Cause fuck button mashing. Yeah, that's one of the things that becomes harder to do with age. <laughs> not even just that. Even it's like you begin to value your, your control is more. So it's like, hmm, yeah, I don't, I'd rather not engage in this. Personally speaking, Lord the skies. <laughs> <laughs> Love this writing. Uh, it's not even that for me. It's like. It is true with all the memes you see on Twitter and Tumblr. By the time you turn 25, your reflexes start to go. 
Which is fine, because that has not you been the case for me, actually. You can't, uh, you, your hands might still be fast, you might be able to do button combinations ju uh, just fine. But mashing is something you just can't do as well as you used to when you were 12. It's also just you don't want to engage that because a lot more people are prone to arthritis in our age in our age group. So yeah, I mean, fuck me. Taylor is 23 and she's already got arthritis in her hands. That and you know you bought the you bought the arthritis controller. Yep. I mean, I I got that a lot more for her, but also partly for me because I'm running low on actual control usable on the Switch. <laughs> you can play that thing on the Switch. Oh, we're talking about the. Oh, are, are you ta what are you talking about for our arthritis controllers? I thought we were talking about the pro controller. The hitbox. Oh, the hip. Well, that's nah. I didn't really buy it for arthritis arthritis purposes. I bought that. I bought that to simplify uh, simplify a lot of stuff in Tekken. Because I saw, because I heard about that thing when it was new. Because it was like it was made by. Or made in collaboration with the oh, melee player. Oh no, that you're thinking of something all. else. So what what you're thinking of no? is um. The guy that just, that just destroyed the all guy the cartilage who literally in his brutalized hands. the tenons in his hands because he played Fox so much in melee. I forgot. Yeah, uh, hacks. Um, I forgot what the actual button uh, box. But they, but they made him. a control. But they made a control. But they made a fight stick just like that for him, and it's like that's where the concept comes from. They with did. Using, uh, I unfortunately uh, the I don't remember what it's keys. called off the top of my head, but yeah, it was literally specifically made so that way, like people can play Smash a lot more comfortably. Um. That was made with that attention. I don't think the hitbox was made with uh, arthritis people in mind. I think it was more so as like a different take on a uh, regular arcade stick uh, playthroughs because yeah, a lot of people who play long time fighting games on arcades like do get pretty fucked up hands. But the idea is that the original version of that idea, the original version of that controller was made with that in mind. And everyone else is, tu is tuning it to their own needs, but the original version was made for that. The hitbox was made first. I don't think it was made for that. The smash box was made separately, and that one definitely does help with more arthritis. But this is one of the instances I was talking about, where depending on where you go, you can just avoid bosses. You can just avoid having to fight Kojiro at all. Yeah. Because he is just not in your direct path. Yeah, you, you could have easily you know. just uh, gone from that middle area right to the far left corner and just ignored him outright. I also managed to do that without triggering the Masamune boss yet either. Because he was standing right there. I like walked like right past him, but I didn't walk into the very specific cone of uh, tr uh, trigger. <laughs> and now because of that, I can fight Kojiro without having to fight Masamune at the same time, and that's... It's not going to say it would be hard to fight them both, because there will be stages where you do fight them both at the same time, but... You know, the less headache, the better. Yeah, what difficulty are you on right now? Are you on hard mode? I imagine. Yeah, yeah, so I'm playing the entire game. I'm playing the entire game on the hardest difficulty. Which is just hard. I think there was something akin to a very hard, or boss, or a lunatic, or whatever. But I think that was taken out of the localized release, go figure. Yeah, that, uh, god. Late 2000s, early 2010s translations, thank you! It could be worse, we could have, we could have a Radiant Dawn scenario. Yeah, I was just, well that's what I was kind of including in my example just now. Late 2000s, early 2010s, uh, trans, uh, localizations, yeah. <laughs> but in, now uh, in... More in the more recent games in Boss Rift 4. Oh, actually, a funny thing. Sorry, really fast. Did I ever tell you that Devil May Cry 3 original ha suffered that same fate as Radiant Dawn? Really? Yeah. So, there was no actual easy mode in the, in the Japanese version of Devil May Cry 3 vanilla. <laughs> uh, not the special edition. Yeah, so originally, easy was uh, easy overseas was normal. E uh, normal was hard, and hard was very hard. Uh, I think it might have to do with the introduction <laughs> of, like, uh, Heaven and Hell mode or something like that, but yeah, uh, it suffered the same fate, and that's why DMC3 has a large stigma of being extremely difficult, which, I mean, its bosses are kind of involved, so I get it, it is fairly difficult in general, but, oh boy, yeah, no one played- Also, Gold mode was not introduced in Delmy Cry, period, until DMC3 Special Edition. 
So imagine <laughs> you you get Devil May Cry 3, you're you're like, okay, I'll do a normal mode, this shouldn't be too bad. But you're actually playing ha Phantom Hard mode, and every time you die, you have no choice but to restart the whole level if you don't have gold orbs. Fun. Ha, <laughs> uh, fuck that noise. Yeah, no thank you, I, I love the, it's like one of my second favorite game of all time, but I'm still gonna say no to that, please. Anyway, sorry, I cut you off. A bit. Abandon your Devil May Cry mentality. Play with, uh, use items whenever the hell you want. I wouldn't be too sure. I only Fox really the, uh, care, I only don't use items if I'm really fucking, or I only use items if I'm really fucking stuck on something. I'm gonna make you so Remember, ranks and points in games are completely arbitrary and don't matter to anyone. Bragging rights aren't real. They only matter in... Diablo yeah, Cry on your first couple playthroughs because they will net you a lot more red orbs if you get higher ranks. At Ergo, lets you access your stronger stuff faster. Mm. Well, nowadays it doesn't matter because ever since oh, yeah, DMC no, nowadays Four Special mean shit. Edition, <laughs> ever since Four Special Edition, you can just buy red orbs. Yeah, I thought it was really funny that people were going insane when. Uh, DMC5 was announced, and it said that there were going to be, excuse me, one-time microtransactions, and it's like, y'all know, y'all know they did this before already, right? Y'all do know that they did this for DMC4. This isn't exactly new. I'm still iffy on that, but I think an easier, I think an easier middle ground would just be get, paying out more right out of support level in general. I think they have stuff like that too. I think they have that way instead of rationing crowd like souls at the end of every level on DMC four, I can just be like, yeah, I can just get a couple new uh, abilities per level, not a big deal. I actually don't find that to be near a big problem in DMC five. I didn't think that my transactions were necessary at all. I'm usually crawling in red orbs before long. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like they're gonna do it anyway. Capcom wants the money, so I don't know why you thought they weren't gonna do that. Yeah, I mean, I, like every I, really, I thought we were all numb to this after Street Fighter cross teching guys. It's like, y'all haven't been playing games for the last 10 years in general. Besides, as always, if you don't want to use them, just don't look at them. Yeah. Don't go to the optional menu for the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store. My only ever gripe about that, and it's a small thing, is just with the super costumes because they originally back in the day getting through Bloody Palace was insane and being able to get the super costume by beating Bloody Palace was seen as a mark of honor. And then with special edition dropping for four, you could just suddenly buy it. And that did kind of rub me the wrong way a little bit, but I'm like, all right, I get it. So, I mean, with Virgil, he's basically a super costume already. So it's basically a moot point. Look at it from this perspective. The uh, the sales of DLC and microtransactions for four might uh, might have contributed to the idea that they want to make Devil May Cry Five. Not that that's at all. extra revenue, because you know that uh, that's uh, that's still extra revenue coming in on top of the game. People are buying DLC. You know those are people that are probably going to be there a bit longer with things like costumes or modes or whatnot. Yeah. I know that in your heart there is a desire. Something that speaks to you, Yukimura. The time has come to reclaim your soul. It really makes me wonder how the fuck these two <laughs> ended up on opposite sides of the field to begin with. It's because EA also has a very particular idea of how things should work. And it's very counter to how everyone else wants things to do. The tradition of things is people would just fight for land for hundreds of years. And he's like, no, let's not fight anymore. And everyone's like, wait, that's weird. Let's not do that. Hmm. I'm ready to fight. Not by the will of another. <clears throat> because it is what I want. <sighs> And, yeah, with Yukimura here, it's him learning his lesson. He needs to be his own man, but more than that, he also needs to, le uh, to learn to accept his own desires. So we are <laughs> they really do just run, run the same song for at the end of everyone's story missions. Nice. Yeah, it's like this. It's like the second theme 
of the game, really. Yeah. Which I guess it's better that they would do this. Oh wait, no, this is the Aosu's theme. Yeah, this is just the Aosu's theme. Never mind. Oh okay. But honestly, it's but honestly, it's better this than uh, them just running back naked arms every time. Yeah. And much and much better for you. Yep. No kidding. Which is uh, funny. Before they just made it an option that you can just do whenever you wanted in four and Yukimura Den. There was an item you could equip in this game that makes it so that Naked Arm plays throughout the entire stage. <laughs> oh god. And it's like, that's funny. But I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Because I don't because I don't want to run us into the ground before we even started. Because that, that would also be grading for us as well, and then it would also just destroy the video on YouTube as well. I think a vocal track would probably uh overshadow all of the actual dialogue. Yeah. So it would make the problem of not being able to hear things even worse. But you know, that's a that's a very Capcom way of doing things. Yeah, true. Also, as much as I like the man, you can only take so much TM revolution in one day. That's you. <laughs> Which reminds me, he was trending the other day, so I was like, oh, cool, something my inter uh, interesting might finally be happening. No, it's because he's voicing a fucking Genshin character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, man, you rip. You son of a bitch. Even if it's not Boss Rick, it could have just been something like, oh, hey, he's about to release a new album or something. But it's like, oh, no, he's playing a fucking Genshin character. Who gives a shit? You're not going to pull him. I could really use uh, a handful of people do care, but it's... Forces with me. Why? I would be most grateful. <laughs> this does look Take very silly with his outfit. <laughs> I just like the horns. The horns are really cool, but the rest of it, man, it's just all over the place. Even if my life were taken from me. Because I don't know if anyone told him, but um, tigers don't have horns. So I don't know where the hell that came from. Japan's weird, yo. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, doesn't Tiger Kai also have horns? I think that's part of it. Yes, but those point directly up, not outwards. Huh. So he, this one's much more like a bull then. Alright. Yeah. But you know, what the, you know what's the weirdest part about this outfit, though? What? Shoot. Yukimura is actually wearing an article of clothing that covers up the entirety of his chest. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, it looks like uh, just straight up metal too. The spirit of the tiger. Yeah, that's like actual armor. Yeah. As opposed to him normally, where he just has the breast pads. Well, I guess also on this note, it's good to see an ending where uh, Ieyasu is not immediately dead, and instead we actually do get some closing dialogue between these two. <laughs> uh, there's not going to be any more of that. Yeah. Get up so I can kill you again. We joke and we laugh because that line is funny out of context, but that is really a heart-wrenching scene. Yes, it is. But yeah, Yukimura just wanted to, as the dialogue kept saying, uh, reclaim, uh, reclaim his honor and dignity and the like. He didn't uh, He didn't need to kill Ieyasu, so he's just not going to. It doesn't really benefit him. Nope. He did... He wanted to get his clout back. Hmm. In a very fucked up way, that analogy does actually hold true. <laughs> One of his lines that you'll hear him spout randomly is, uh, uh, come and challenge me if, I, uh, if you think you're capable. You'll no doubt defeat me to claim my title. <laughs> I'm like, I think yeah, we have it backwards. Great vote of self-confidence. Yeah. That I'm, I'm gonna say something that you won't understand, but at least one wrestling fan will understand. Uh, Sid Vicious in WCW saying to, to Kevin Nash, I, but I got half the brain that you do. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the red route down. And weirdly, despite that being the good route, the thing that happens at the end with the Tiger Kai didn't happen, so I guess that might be the blue route where things are supposed to go wrong? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, going to be different there. Again, it's not necessarily about going wrong so much as taking a different path. I guess also in a oh, way of going to... wrong, quote unquote, in that Yukimura doesn't actually find his own path. Instead, just the status quo returns. Yeah. Oh, wow, well, you're right. That is, uh, that is a way of things going wrong. Yeah. Well, let's proceed. 